everybody and welcome to IGB Kids Club. It's great to see you again. This week we're thinking about friends again. We thought about friends last week, didn't you? Can you remember what happened in the story with the four friends? Well, this week we're thinking about who Jesus calls his friends. Who do you think Jesus's friends were? Who do you think Jesus liked hanging out with and spending time with? You were telling me about a story this week about your friends, Nellie, weren't you? Nellie's very lucky because he's been able to carry on going to school, haven't you, Nellie? And this week, something happened to one of ne Nellie's friends called Puddles. Can I tell the children about the story? Oh, thank you, Nellie. So, this is Nellie's friend, Puddles. One day, Puddles was playing with his little sister in the garden whilst Dad was washing up. This was a particularly good day for Puddles and his little sister because Dad had given them ice cream after tea. Puddles' sister had almost polished off her ice cream and was just about to take the last few mouthfuls when suddenly a big black cat jumped out of the hedge and whisked the ice cream out of her paws. Being three, Puddles' sister let out an almighty wail. She sat down in the flower pot and screamed and screamed. Puddles looked down at his ice cream, smothered in chocolate sauce and sprinkles. Then he looked up at his sister, wailing in the flower pot. Oh well, she's eaten most of it, Puddles thought to himself. Just as his tongue felt the first zings of sugary sweetness pinging off the sprinkles, he felt a pang in his chest. His sister's wails had softened to little sobs. Slowly, Puddles stood up and walk towards her. It's all right, sis. You can have my ice cream. I've not even started it, Puddles said. Puddles went to sleep that night, dreaming of ice cream and sprinkles. The next morning, when he came to breakfast, Dad was already at the table, and he was holding a big box. What's that, Dad? asked Puddles excitedly. It's a present for you, because I loved how kind you were yesterday with your sister, said Dad. Puddles took the box and looked inside. He couldn't believe it. Inside the box was the biggest, shiniest, bounciest ball he had ever seen. Puddles could not wait to get to school to show all his friends his new toy. At school, Puddles sat in the classroom trying to do maths, but he could see his new ball just peeping over the top of his school bag and he couldn't concentrate on anything other than how amazing it was going to be to play with his new ball at break. He decided that instead of doing maths, he needed to choose who he would let play with his new ball. Now, Dad had said he'd got the ball because he was kind and shared his ice cream. So, Puddles thought to himself, he must only share his ball with the children in his class who were kind and nice. He looked at Thumper next to him. No, Thumper couldn't play with his new ball because Puddles had seen him sneak a chocolate bar from Tim, Tim's lunchbox this morning. What about Tim then? But no, he had snatched Rainbow's rubber in English. And Rainbow definitely couldn't play because she had shouted at Tim and called him a mean name. Puddles looked at the next table. But no, Mr Blue had been cross with that table for talking during the spelling test. Finally, Puddles looked across at Rudolph, his very best friend. Surely Rudolph would be good enough. 
But then Puddles remembered how Rudolph had told Mr Blue about him last week when he tried to copy his homework. No, no one was as kind as Puddles had been last night and the new ball was only for kind people, Puddles decided. At last it was time for break and all the toys rushed outside. Puddles pulled his brilliant new ball from his bag and immediately everyone crowded around him asking to play. But Puddles held the ball high above his head and walked over to an empty spot of the playground. No one, he decided, was good enough to play with his ball except him. He looked down at the ball. The problem is, he thought, it's kind of hard to play by yourself. He pushed the ball with his paw and it rolled away. But there was no one there to kick it back to him. After a while, Puddles sat down. There was no point playing with his ball if he couldn't play with his friends, he sighed. Puddles, someone said. Puddles looked up. There was Dad at the gates. He rushed over. Why aren't you playing with your new ball? Dad asked. Well, because there's no one as good or as kind as me to play with, Puddles replied. Oh, Puddles, said Dad, that ball isn't just for kind people. I know you were kind last night, but that wasn't really why I gave you the ball. I gave it to you because I love you. Puddles looked at his dad and then back at his friends. He picked up his ball and rushed over to them. Come on everyone, he shouted. Let's have a game with my ball. Everyone is welcome. What did you think of the story? As you think about it, we're going to move into activity time. And then after activity time, we're going to hear another short story about, not about Nellie's friends, but about Jesus and his friends. So I'll see you in activity time. So this week in activity time, we're going to be making a craft whilst we think about how Jesus wants everyone to feel welcome. So the things you'll need are two pieces of paper or card. Card is better if you've got it, but paper is fine too. You'll need some felt tips or some colouring pencils, some scissors, some glue, and something to decorate with if you want to. So I've got some sequins, but anything from your pot of decorations will be great. So you can get whatever you like. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is take one of our pieces of card and a pencil and we're going to have a go at drawing round our hands. So we're going to put our hands on the piece of paper and then take the pencil and draw around. go and then once we've drawn around it we want to fold the piece of paper or the piece of card in half like this and cut it out and what do you think is going to happen when we cut it out because we folded it in half we're going to get two aren't we so we need to you might need to ask an adult to help you with the cutting bit because you need to be very careful when using sharp scissors. So we're going to cut around. And whilst we're cutting, we can think about making everybody welcome. So what do you think it means to make everybody feel welcome? Have there been any times at school for you or somewhere else where you have seen somebody who maybe hasn't felt welcome. Somebody who maybe felt a little bit lonely or felt like they weren't made to feel welcome. 
And maybe you can have a think about different ways that we can help people to feel welcome. So it might be feeling welcome in your classroom or on the playground or in your, in your home. There's lots and lots of different ways to help people feel welcome. And I think that making people feel welcome and included is something that Jesus really wants us to do. Okay, so I've nearly finished cutting out my hands. There we go. Okay, so I've got two hands now, two yellow hands. And the next thing we need to do is take the other piece of card. So I've got pink because pink and yellow are my favourite colours. And we need to cut a nice long strip of card. So my card has already had a little heart cut out of it, but that doesn't matter because all we need is a strip of card. So I'm going to just cut down like this. Okay. And then we're going to fold the card in a concertina shape. So we fold it once that way, then we flip it over and fold it the other way. We flip it again and fold it that way and we keep going. There we go, until we've got a spring shape like this. And on our piece of card, we need to straighten it out again. And on the card, we're going to write, everyone is welcome. So let's have a go at writing that together. Everyone is welcome. And we're going to stick that now between the two hands. So we need to take one end and the glue stick. Pop a little blob of glue on there and stick that side there. Then we're going to fold it up into the spring and stick. I shouldn't have put an exclamation mark really, should I? Because now we've got to stick it and try and line up the hands and stick that side there so that then when we open up the hands inside it says everybody is welcome and so we can use this to remind ourselves about how important it is to make sure that everybody feels welcome and then on the on the two hands on the front and the back you can decorate it however you like so I'm just going to get my felt tips and my sequins and I'm just going to start sticking on some sequins to make it look pretty but you can decorate it however you want and I'm sure you'll do a brilliant job of decorating your hands. So you can have a go at home now at making and decorating your everybody is welcome hands. Welcome back everybody. I hope you had fun in activity time thinking about how everyone's welcome. We're just going to finish off today with another story. This story is from the Bible and it's about Jesus and his friends. It happens just after the story from last week. So if you want to read it in your Bible, you can find it in Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter nine. When Jesus was leaving, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the place for collecting taxes. Jesus said to him, follow me. So he got up and followed Jesus. 
Jesus ate dinner at Matthew's house. Many tax collectors and others with bad reputations came and ate with him and his followers. The Pharisees saw that Jesus was eating with these people. They asked his followers, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and other sinners? Jesus heard them say this, so he said to them, Is it the sick? It is the sick people who need a doctor, not those who are healthy. You need to go and learn what this scripture means. I don't want sacrifices. I want you to show kindness to people. I did not come to invite good people. I came to invite sinners. Now there's lots of different ways of understanding this story. But the thing I want us to think about today is how Jesus said that he didn't come just to be friends with the people who thought they were good, but he came to be friends with everyone, even the people who everyone thought were bad. The tax collectors were thought of as bad people because they were often dishonest. And so people were very surprised when Jesus wanted to hang out with them and even ate with them. It's a bit like how Puddles thought that only he was good enough to play with his ball. Some people thought only they were good enough to be friends with Jesus. But Jesus said, it's not about being good enough. He said, I am here for everyone. Everyone can be my friend. So now I'm going to ask you those questions again that I mentioned right at the beginning. Who do you think Jesus's friends were and who did he like hanging out with? Okay, we're going to finish off now with a quick prayer and that's all we've got time for. Dear Jesus, thank you that you love everyone and that you want to be friends with everyone. Please help us to make everybody feel welcome and to look out for the people who maybe don't feel welcome and try to include them. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, everyone, that's all we've got time for. So I look forward to seeing you again next week. Bye.